summary, summary somewhat of what we did yesterday just to make sure everybody has all the details. I think for the most part y'all got it from the um, graphing activity that I had to do and then from the 10 marks, but I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So, when we have a trig function, regardless of whether it's sine or cosine, we can have a coefficient in front, we can have a coefficient with the x, we didn't talk about this part yesterday, the plus c, that's what we're going to talk about today, and then the plus d on the end, um, let's just make sure everybody's on the same page as far as what those are. Um, the absolute value of a equals what? Positive. Obviously it's positive, but what does that tell us about the graph? What, what part of that graph? The amplitude, okay? It's the amplitude of our graph. Amplitude is always positive, so even if that a is negative, the amplitude is still a positive number, okay? Now the negative is going to flip it over, okay? So I'll put in parentheses here, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a negative a flips the graph over. <clears throat> I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, so let's just talk about that for a second. Typically, sine starts on the midline and it increases and then it decreases. Okay, that would be a positive A. Uh, if that were a negative A, it still starts on the midline, but it starts decreasing first and then it increases. Okay, that would be a negative A for sine. And if we're talking about cosine, cosine starts at the maximum. That would be a positive A times cosine of X. If you have a negative A, it's going to start at the minimum. Okay, so that's a little summary about the effects of A. It affects the amplitude. I think everybody got that if it's bigger than 1, it's going to make your function taller. If it's less than one, it's going to shrink it <clears throat> and make it shorter. Now, the b, the coefficient of b, that's multiplying our x. Well, our x has to do with our period. So to figure out the period, 2 pi divided by b is equal to the period. Okay, that is the new period, or just call it period, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's the period of the function that you're looking at. Okay, um, so if there's nothing with the x, it's understood to be 1, so 2 pi divided by 1 is still 2 pi, so that doesn't change it. Um, remember, a lot of times when things are associated with the x, they're the opposite of what we expect, and you saw that. When it was like 0.5x, that actually increased the length of the period. When it was 2x, it decreased the length of the period, it shortened the period. Um, so get used to the fact that when things are with the x, they're the opposite of what you would expect them to be. Um, y equals d is the midline. Okay, that's the middle of our function. So if there's nothing added or subtracted from the end of our function, then <coughs> our midline is still y equals 0, the x-axis. But if there is something added or subtracted there, it's going to shift the entire function up and down. Um, you may also hear that referred to as the vertical shift. I think on the uh, worksheets that I just gave you, it says to identify the vertical shift. That's the midline, okay? Now, C is the new thing. That's, we didn't talk any about C yesterday. The coefficient of C affects what we call the phase shift, okay? What it's going to do is it's actually going to be that horizontal movement of the function, so what you need to do is to figure out what your phase shift is, you've got to factor B out of what's inside the parentheses, and then the linear factor that you're left with, you're going to set it equal to zero and solve for X, and that is your phase shift, okay? I'm going to show you here in a second, okay? Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so that, that's how we do it. We'll look at an example here in a second. We're going to look at number one and we're going to look at number five. Okay, so let's look at number one first. Our function is five sine of six theta plus three pi over four plus four. 
So we need to identify the amplitude, the period, or the phase shift, and on the worksheet it says vertical shift up here. I said midline. Um, they're the same thing. Okay. So amplitude is the coefficient, and I can't spell amplitude, is the coefficient in front of the trig function. Okay, so 5 is our amplitude. That is always a positive number. So that means that from our midline, it is 5 units up to the highest point. It's 5 units down to the lowest point. The period. Okay, the period is 2 pi divided by our coefficient b. And it's probably a good idea to go ahead and label these coefficients when you approach a problem. So our coefficient b is 6. So when we simplify that, we get pi over 3 is our new period. So instead of one complete cycle being completed between 0 and 2 pi, it is shrunk significantly and it only gets, uh, uh, we complete one cycle by the time we get to pi over 3, which is 6 and 3. That's a very short uh, period of time. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the midline since that's the other thing that's not really new. Our midline here would be y equals positive 4 because we're adding 4 on the end. Now, here's how we figure out the phase shift. Okay, what we need to do is you take out uh, the angle from the trig function. So we're going to take 6 theta plus 3 pi over 4, and we're going to set that equal to 0. Technically, you can do this without factoring. Technically, you can just solve this equation for theta. Um, people look at it different ways. I'm going to show you the factoring, bless you, because that's kind of how they approach it from the state perspective, so I want you to see that. So we factor out b. We take out 6. Okay, now, I know 3 pi over 4 is not technically divisible, evenly divisible by 6. Okay? But when you're factoring something out, it's like you're dividing by that number or you're multiplying by its reciprocal. So if we factor out 6 from 3 pi over 4, that becomes 3 pi over 24. Okay? If you look at it from the perspective of multiplying by the reciprocal, it's the same as division. So 3 pi over 4 times 1 6 gives you 3 pi over 24, which simplifies to pi over 8. <clears throat> we set that um, 6 times pi over, excuse me, 6 times theta plus pi over 8 equal to 0. The only way that's going to equal 0 is if theta plus pi over 8 equals 0. So we subtract. So we get negative pi over 8, so that means our phase shift, it's negative, so we move left, pi over 8. No, the 6, we, we I mean, it, we have included it in there. When we factored it out, we, we included it to that. Okay? So if you were to graph this by hand, which yes, I know you have your calculators at your disposal and the exam and all that stuff, but this is what they would want you to go through when you're factoring it, okay? And this is the process that I would go through. First of all, I would identify my midline, okay? I would go ahead, I would kind of put like a dashed line or y equals 4. Um, I would go ahead and mark off my period from 0 to pi over 3, because I know i got to fit that entire thing between 0 and pi over 3. I would identify which function I've got, sine or cosine. I've got sine, so that means I start on the midline. Um, I amplitude 5, okay? Um, and halfway through my period, I'm going to hit my midline again. So I can kind of mark off those points. I hit my amplitude, uh, or I hit the highest point, 5 units above my midline, and I hit my lowest point, 5 units below my midline. And then the last thing that I would do is I would take that entire graph and I would move it left, pi over 8 units. That's the technical process. Now, I didn't actually write that down or tell you because you have your calculators, okay? Uh, you can use those, but that's the whole purpose of knowing all these things is so that you can do it by hand that way. So now, okay. we, so now we can't just look at the graph. Well, you can.
can look at the graph, but when you know these things, you're going to save yourself a lot of time with having to type it in and change your window and do all that. If you can just identify these things, then you can visually match the equation to a graph. Oh, but I was saying in terms of like sine and cosine. What about Because whenever like whenever I see a like a sine problem, I automatically look that it's going over like that, over uh -huh. that. But whenever I see a cosine, I look and that the apex is right at the top. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you still do that. That's still a part of it. But then there are other factors too if you're having to compare more than one. Whatever I find this at. Then I would go. Oh, you're talking about with the phase shift. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. Um, yeah, but you'll you'll be able to tell the difference because a phase shift of pi over eight. All right, so let's just say sine looks like this. So a phase shift left of pi over eight is just going to slightly move it what that way. A major thing where it actually puts the maximum on. Like so if it was pi over 2, yeah. pi over 2, actually that's an interesting point, a phase shift of pi over 2 actually turns sine into cosine. Don't tell us that. A phase shift of pi over 2 turns sine into cosine. Look at the graphs from yesterday. <clears throat> Where is the peak? Where's the maximum point of sine? No. Oh, wait, no. Point. Okay, the y value, but what's the x value? Where does that happen? I heard somebody say pi over 2. Okay, so if we shifted that over pi over 2 to the left, where is that peak going to occur then? At 0, which is where cosine has its peak. At zero. So we're going to have to do problems where it starts out at sine, we shift it, then we have to rewrite it and to go home. Oh, okay. No. Oh. Is that kind of like... Does that, mean, oh, wait, does that also mean that we can oh. see or... Hot here. Okay, let's look at a cosine. Alright, so notice this one's a little out of order, okay? It's a little out of order. The 4 is not at the end, but it is still your D. The 1, 8 is the A, 7 is the B, and pi over 4 is the C. So when we're trying to identify everything here, the amplitude is 1 8. So how is this going to compare to the standard cosine function? Vertical what? Stretch or shrink? Shrink. Okay, because you're multiplying all of your y values by 1 8. They are 1 8 as tall as they were before. So this is going to be a very, very short cosine function. All right, uh, period. 2 pi divided by b7. So that one doesn't reduce. So we're done. That is a horizontal shrink. Okay, our period went from being 2 pi to 1 seventh of that. <laughs> So it's a whole lot tighter horizontally. Okay, uh, the vertical shift or the midline is the same as number one was. Okay, that four is positive, so that's going to shift our entire function up four units. Now you don't really have to um, write all these out in words every time you do one of these problems. I'm just <clears throat> writing it down so that you have an association between what it is and what happens to the graph. Okay, and then finally our phase shift. We set our angle equal to zero. So 7 theta minus pi over 4. We set that equal to zero. I'm going to go at it from the perspective of just solving for theta here. So I'm going to add the pi over 4 because it was negative. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by one step. Okay, it's the same thing as if we had done the factoring, guys. It's just a different way of getting there. Okay, so our phase shift is pi over 28. That is positive. So our phase shift is right pi over 28 because it was a positive value.